Hello friends, welcome back to the quants question of the day, quantitative aptitude. Of course, what I would suggest is that once you have done the theory of each of the chapters that we are talking about here, it's after that that this will be most useful for you. But even if you're a starter and you've not studied everything, it might still be uh, instructive or, or useful in your in your prep cycle to, to watch these videos. So this is the question I've picked up today. This is again a question from number systems. And as I regularly tell you that if you want to improve your quants, you have to make sure that you understand or you get a better understanding of the variables involved inside the questions and also of the triggers inside the question. So there are different points in the question in quants where the question tells you to do something. So if you improve the quality of your reading and your reactions at those points, you automatically improve your ability to think in quantitative aptitude. So what is this question saying? The question is saying M is a two digit number. Now this is itself a trigger because it, it, in, in, it induces a thought in my mind which says that M is a two digit number. And of course, when I think of a two digit number, I, if I'm thinking mathematically, I have, to, I have to think about it, it as 10A plus B. But if I'm thinking uh, logically, I can think of a two digit number simply as AB because that's how we see a number like 28 is we don't think of it as 10 into 2 plus 8 into 1. 8 into uh, this thing, 8 into 1, but we think about it as 28 itself. So I can think of this two-digit number as AB, logically, which has the property that. Now, there's a property that they're talking about. And if you read this property on your own, I would like you to connect this to every time this comparative is used in a maths question. So whenever in a maths question you have a comparative, something is greater than something, whether this is written in the form of the symbol, or it is written simply in language and maths language is full of comparatives so whenever you have a comparative structure like this basically a number opens up on this side and a number opens up on that side and what you have to do in your reading is split the reading of the sentence into this number separately and that number separately so based on this understanding of the reading of the situation, if I go ahead and try to read this, my first reaction will be that this is where N1 is. And I need to understand what N1 is before I move ahead. The product of, and, and I've seen a lot of students not doing this, which is why they find it difficult to solve questions like this, which is why it, it appears in LOD in my books. The product of factorial of its digits. Now let's try to understand what is this saying for the number AB. What do you mean by the product of factorials of its digits? So what we need to understand when you read this language is that AB is a two digit number and factorial of its digits are A factorial and B factorial. And the product of the factorial of its digits is A factorial into B factorial. So in my something greater than something, n1 greater than n2. This is what is occupying the value of n1, a factorial into b factorial. This is the understanding that I get at this point of my reading. So that's my, my reading. If, if you uh, have a confusion at this again, you can replay the video there. That part, what we are telling is a factorial into b factorial is greater than something else. And once I understand this, then I go to the next part of the sentence and that's how it should be. Where is N2 in the sentence now? So if I look at N2, greater than sum of factorials of its digits. So now we know what the factorial of the digits are and we are talking about the sum of the factorial of the digits. So we are talking about A factorial into B factorial being greater than A factorial plus B factorial. Now, there needs to be a little bit of back-end thinking here once you have organized this to, to help you understand what you have to do in this question. Now, the back-end thinking is that when you talk about, let's say, any two numbers, N1 and N2, or let's say, okay, just forget the fact that I used N1 and N2 there. Let's just talk about two numbers like uh, L and M. If I have two numbers L and M and I multiply them versus I add them, my normal expectation is that the multiplication will always be greater than the addition. 
but it's not always the case in maths. There are three particular cases in which the addition becomes greater than or equal to the multiplication. The first case is when any one of them is zero. If any one of them is zero or both are zero, then the greater than product greater than sum does not work. The sum becomes, if both of them are zero, the sum becomes equal to the product. If one of them is zero, and we are talking about positive numbers, if one of them is zero, then the sum is larger than the product. It becomes opposite. It becomes contra. The greater than sign becomes the less than sign there. When one of the numbers is zero. The second condition in which the sum can become greater than the product in maths, and you will see a lot of questions in quants and cat based on this logic, and hence you should understand this numerical logic. The second condition is when any one of the numbers is 1. So if you are multiplying a 3 into 1, for example, it is not greater than, it's actually less than 3 plus 1, because multiplication by 1 gives you the same number, and addition of 1 increases the number by 1. So that's the second condition in which sum is greater than product of two numbers. First condition is when one of the numbers is 0. Second condition is when one, one of the numbers is 1. And the other number can be any other number. Right? And the third condition, a specific condition for sum equal to product. And this is the only case in maths, in numerical uh, analysis or numerical thinking where the sum of two numbers is equal to product of two numbers. That happens at 2 plus 2 equal to 2 into 2. The sum and product become equal when you have 2 plus 2 and 2 into 2. These, this is the case where it's equal. So having said that, then once you, once you realize that, you want, and the question trigger again after giving you the greater than sign, it's asking you how many values of m exist. So we are looking for values of m which satisfy the equation or the inequality. And that's the right word to use there. Which satisfy the inequality of greater than for product greater than sum of the factorials. So you want this product of the two numbers to be greater than sum of the two numbers. And for that to happen, for the product to be greater than sum, if you want to count how many numbers there are, we can go contra. We can say that there are 90 two-digit numbers from 10 to 99. And from that, let's subtract the number of cases in which this does not happen. Now, when you talk about this not happening, either A factorial or B factorial has to be 1 or 0 or 2. Both of them have to be 2. So when you realize that and you realize that the factorial of digits starting with even 0 factorial has a value of 1 and 1 factorial has a value of 1 and 2 factorial has a value of 2 and 3 factorial onwards to 9 factorial the value goes much higher than 2. You realize that this the contra event of sum being greater than product or equal to product the chances are only there when you are taking numbers between uh, at least one of the digits as 0, 1, 2. So once you realize that, then you can start thinking, okay, uh, how many cases will the sum be greater than product in the tens? So in the tens, because whether you're talking about 10 or 11 or 12 up to 19, one of the numbers will be 1. In each of the cases, the sum will be greater than product. So you can check this. 1 factorial plus 9 factorial will be greater than 1 factorial into 9 factorial. Which means that all the numbers from 10 to 19, 10 numbers here, are going to contradict the product greater than sum situation. So we should subtract these 10 numbers from my count of 90 numbers where product will be greater than sum. Then when I go into the 20s, when I reach the 20s, I realize that in 20, 21 and 22, in three numbers, the product of the sum will be greater than or equal to the product of the factorials. So if you look at 22 factor 22, so 2 factorial plus 2 factorial is what will emerge on this side and 2 factorial into 2 factorial will emerge on the other side and you can see that they are not I mean, you don't have the greater than, the product greater than sum situation here. You have equality in this case. And similarly, you can, you can think of 20, 21. So there are three more numbers in the 20s. And you don't need to worry about, about having to do this for a long time because from the 30s to the 90s, you can predict that in each of 30, in, in the 30s, you'll have two numbers, 30 and 31, that will have this property. 
3 factorial plus 0 factorial is greater than 3 factorial into 0 factorial because 3 factorial is 6 plus 1 is greater than 6 into 1 3 factorial plus 1 factorial is greater than 3 factorial into 1 factorial 3 factorial plus 1 factorial is greater than 3 factorial into 1 factorial from 32 onwards it will be fine the service will resume product will be greater than sum because 3 factorial into 2 factorial which is 6 into 2 is greater than 6 plus 2 32 to 39 this is not going to happen so in the 30s there are only two numbers and likewise in the 40s the key is that you want either one of the digits to be 0 or 1 now and in 40s there are only two numbers where one digit is 0 or 1 going all the way to the 90s there's only two numbers 1991 which will have this property that the product will not be greater than the sum so you have to subtract these are all the numbers having the contra property so there are seven such cases 7 into 14 so if I subtract 14 from here the answer is going to be 63 there are 63 numbers that obey this property of uh, how many values of m exist such that the product of the factorial of digits is greater than sum of factorial of digits and hence the correct answer is option c so i'll come back to you with more on this i hope you enjoyed this do comment on the on the video thank you so much bye bye for now please do subscribe to the channel bye bye